All right, gentlemen. What's up, man? Everybody good this morning? Give me some energy. I know it's early for some of us, but man, give me some energy. I need it this morning. I don't have a lot of time, so, uh, so I'm going to just dive right in. And uh, some of you will like me by the end of this. Some of you might not. Uh, I'm going to be very direct and very candid. Let me first of all say to Mark, I'm so grateful for you. As he stated, it's rare that I can, upon immediate encounter, have such a very honest and uh, just transparent conversation. And he and I, from, from go, we hit it off well, and we had some very deep and honest conversation in a matter of 30 minutes riding to the, to the uh, airport. And so I knew immediately we were going to be friends for life uh, based upon that relationship. And I, just, I like just authentic, honest, direct people, right, because life is short. And we don't have a whole lot of time to get what God, what God needs us to get done on earth. And, uh, and so, guys, I'm going to be very transparent up here. I'm going to talk a lot about my own junk, about a lot of my own flaws. And I hope to liberate some minds today. I hope to liberate you and just unleash you for God's kingdom. And that's my intention. So I'm going to say a quick prayer, and then we're just going to dive right in. And hopefully uh, you'll get what, whatever God brought you here to get this morning. So, Father, we thank you for this incredible group of men. Thank you for the husbands in the room, for the fathers for the brothers, for the uncles, for the CEOs, the key executives, the, the middle managers, uh, the sales guys, the architects, the accountants, the doctors, the lawyers, the dentists, whoever's in the room, Father, we thank you that only you can bring a body of Christ together like this. So many different men from so many backgrounds, yet who have a unified vision to see your kingdom go forward. And so, Father, we honor you for the privilege to do life. We honor you for the opportunity to get up this morning and actually have the privilege to walk with our own two legs and breathe on our own and, and see on our own and hear on our own. What an honor, God, that you would give us this privilege yet one more day. And so, Father, I pray that every single man in this room would be reminded not to take each day for granted. Let's not take life for granted. Father, let's honor you because you've honored us so much to give us another day. I pray that literally tonight we would be exhausted because we gave everything we had to give for your kingdom today. So, Father, we love you, we adore you, we praise you, and we celebrate uh, our awesome Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, this day. Hallelujah to your name, God, and amen. amen. Uh, this morning, guys, uh, Rob, Rob uh, witnessed me, text him this morning, 3.59 a.m. It's like, hey, Rob, I need a little small favor. 3.15 this morning, I was up, right, ready to go. And, and the, reason I, the reason I say that is because, guys, I got a lot of gaps in my life. All right. I have a whole lot of gaps in my life, and I would challenge you this morning to be honest about the gaps in your life. Right. So I'm here to hopefully help take you to the next level. We're going to be unapologetically, unashamedly um, pronouncing of Jesus Christ this morning uh, and the grace that we've been given through our Lord and Savior. And I want to couple that <clears throat> that grace with the activity of your spirit this morning that that I want to challenge you this morning to really think long and hard about, are you giving the kingdom the best you have to offer this morning? So I get up early every single morning intentionally because I realize how many gaps I have in my life. There's a whole lot of things that I said as a kid that I wanted to accomplish, and I'm, I'm living most of those dreams, many of those dreams out right now. But it takes a whole lot of work because of the gaps and the, and the issues and the sicknesses that I had in my life. And so for many men in the room this morning, there are some things you said you want to accomplish. There are some things you said you want to see in your life. But if truth be told, while you look suited and booted and fresh on the outside, on the inside, there may be a lack of fulfillment. And I've got about 26 minutes, according to my watch, to hopefully help drive you uh, as closer to that fulfillment factor as I possibly can this morning. So I'm going to do it with speed, and I'm going to go right in on you All right, this morning. So I want you to pay attention to this slide. So, so the magic happens over here, but for many of us, again, there are some gaps in our lives. So, so I want to help you think about how you move from here, wherever here is for you this morning. It could be a here in your marriage. It could be a here in your career. It could be a here in your relationship with your children. It could be a here in your relationship with another family member. It could be a here in your relationship with Christ. Wherever here is, you have a there in your mind. But you're here this morning physically, and you're here in terms of wherever you are in this space in your life, and I want to hopefully help you move from here to there. And it's going to take a lot of adjustments and a lot of hard work in order for us to make that shift, right? And I'll be honest. I was speaking to a group yesterday, and I said, you know, they asked me, like, Flynn, how did you get from where you were as a child? And I'll tell you a little bit about my story in just a moment. But I said, I had to get to a point in my life where I was sick and tired of being sick and tired. 
I was tired of losing, and, and I made the decision that I was going to stop making excuses and start making adjustments. Right? And so that's my challenge for you this morning. Stop making excuses and start making adjustments. If, if your marriage is jacked up, stop making excuses and start making adjustments. If your relationship with your children is jacked up, stop making excuses and start making adjustments. If you're not seeing the results you want to see in your life from a financial vantage point, from a physical vantage point, uh, from a relational vantage point, from the vantage point of community engagement, from your spiritual walk, stop making excuses and start making adjustments, right? And I had to do that, guys. I'm, I'm going to speak from firsthand experience. That's me and my mom. Mom was a teenager. She, she was pregnant at 16, had me. She turned 17 on May 15, 1977, had me 38 days later, June 22, 1977. My dad and she, they met when they were in junior high school together. Mom was abandoned at seven. She had a five-year-old sister and a three-year-old brother. Her mom walked out on her. My grandmother had five nervous breakdowns. I watched my grandmother get arrested in order to get uh, some mental support in her life. She was standing over her own sister with a butcher knife threatening to take her life. So the cops literally had to, I visited my grandmother in prison, right? My mom's dad was a drunk, he was an alcoholic, he was a truck driver, he was on the road, he was a womanizer, so he was in and out of her life, her whole life. So she found my dad in junior high school, they met, they consummated, and at 17, they gave birth to me. Right, my dad was a janitor, still a janitor. Right now, I was telling the guys last night, he lives in Peoria, Illinois right now, and this morning when his feet hit the floor, he'll be going to a hospital to mop floors. Right, back then in high school, he graduated high school, went to Leonard's Barbecue, was a dishwasher by day, and did some catering stuff at night. I carry the last name Flynn. My dad is a Sanders, my mom is a Harvey. It's a whole child support thing I don't have time to get into. But bottom line, I come, I'm from the hood, guys. I'm from a broken, jacked up, drug-infested, gang-infested community. Right, and God has blessed me to be able to have the grace to come out. I'm not just talking noise up here. I'm a living example of God's grace, how God can move in somebody's life and pull them out of the muck and mire. There's that song started from the bottom. Now we're here. We literally started from the bottom. Right, we literally started from the bottom. We followed my dad in 1982 to Peoria, Illinois. He got a promotion. He became a, a bond tray handler. Uh, he left Leonard's Barbecue as a dishwasher and became a bond tray handler at Butternut Bakery in Peoria, 1982. From there, that was summer of 82, by December of 82, he was putting my mom and I on a Greyhound bus with one single blue suitcase. We didn't know where we were going to live that night, and I was telling the guys last night, that's the day I became the CEO of Anthony Flynn Inc. That's the day adversity hit me like a ton of bricks, and, and life was all of a sudden flipped upside down for me, and I had to spend the rest of my life up to this point trying to figure out how to overcome the trauma and all the junk of my childhood. There are whole lots of generational curses in my life that I've had to fight daily to overcome and battle in order to actually try to keep a stable mind and a stable condition in my family and in my household, right? And so there are many of you who are here this morning and you're wrestling with some things, right? Life is, life is for somebody here, you're getting kicked in the mouth right now by life. You're here, you may be smiling this morning, but the truth of the matter is on the inside, you, you're torn up. And I'm, again, I'm that dude. Like, I understand what that feels like to be in a position in life where you have no idea what the answer is of how to get out of that pain and how to get out of that trauma. Right? And so this is the crib. Now, you can probably not see it as well, but this is a duplex. So 684 Richmond Avenue on the left, 686 on the right. That's where my mom and I ended up after we got on that Greyhound bus. There were no cell phones, right? So she was popping quarters trying to figure out exactly where we were going to live that night. And I lay in her bosom, and I wept the entire trip home from Peoria, Illinois to Memphis, Tennessee. By the way, that's where I'm from, originally Memphis. And, 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 and it was like something in me at five years old, something in me rose up and said, I will spend the rest of my natural life not only trying to free myself from, from this situation where I'm enslaved to the responsibility of another man, but I will also spend the rest of my natural life trying to figure out how to liberate other people. Right, because what a poor position to be in where somebody could literally decide on any given night that he's going to come in, hand you a blue suitcase and say, get out of my house. And my mom had no idea where we were going to end up. And for a lot of us, life feels like that sometimes. I'm a living example that, again, let's keep God's grace at the top of it all. But you as an individual have the opportunity of a lifetime to be able to stand up and make adjustments in your life and be able to live out the dreams that you decide you want to live in your life. I'm that example. 
right? And so this isn't prosperity perspective. It's 3.30 in the morning is what it is. You can get your butt up in the morning and make a hard decision that you're going to get out of life exactly what you want, out of your marriage. Guys, I was the worst husband in the world for the first five years. Horrible. I'm, I'm 22 years in my relationship with my wife, 17 years in marriage, and I'm still recovering from some of the young, dumb decisions that I made as a young man. I've had to make adjustments, guys. 30 plus thousand dollars in therapy and coaching. By the way, I have a coach and a therapist on retainer. No, I'm serious. See, see we, we as men, I can just talk like this. We as men, we like to pretend like we have it all figured out and like we have it all together. Right? And I, I'm, again, I came to have a very honest monologue. It's not really a dialogue. I came to have a very honest monologue with you. If you got some jacked up stuff in your life, bro, you need to fix it. You, I need you to get it together because there are people counting on you. Most importantly, the kingdom is counting you. I'm counting on you, brother. We're, we're back to back like soldiers. I need you to be effective for the kingdom so that God's kingdom can go forward and, and together we can accomplish more and we can help more people come to Jesus and we can be effective fathers and husbands and dads and uncles and businessmen, etc. I need you to step up and you need me to step up. So I got up this morning because I felt like you were counting on me. Right? You don't care about what's going on in my life. You came in at, at 5 o'clock in the morning, and I better be ready to speak. Right? <laughs> right? And so in like manner, life is like that for us. The kingdom expects the most out of us. And I'm going to share some scriptures in just a moment, and I want to challenge you to think about, are you giving everything you have to give for the kingdom in spite of the adversity and the circumstances around you? This, th this was one of the best gifts I could have ever had in my life. Right? Adversity. Poverty, right? Because, because I've learned the behaviors of converting pain to purpose. I've, adversity has taught me so much. A lot of my homeboys, a lot of my friends, no disrespect because my children are growing up in, privilege, in a privileged environment. But a lot of my friends who grew up extremely privileged, when life strikes, they don't know how to respond. They, they, don't, they, don't know how, they don't know how to shake adversity off and continue moving forward. I've got a CEO who is a Fortune 200 CEO uh, who, who is in his 70s, who's, a, who's worth hundreds of millions of dollars, and in his 70s, he, he, he's hit a major life crisis, and I'm the guy helping walk him through it right now. In his 70s. Right, so, so, so you're not exempt no matter the age, no matter the amount of success, no matter the progeny. You're not exempt from adversity, but I hope this morning that you will be able to understand how to embrace the journey of life and leverage it for the good that God has for you. And many of us are ducking and dodging from the circumstances around us, and it's preventing us, guys, from living out fulfillment at the ultimate level in our lives. And I want to challenge you this morning to step up, right, to step up. Again, let's think about our marriages. Let's think about our parenting. Let's think about our careers. Let's think about our community service, our leadership. Are you giving everything you have to give and everything you're capable of giving on this very day, this morning? All right? Th these are just some of the brands that I've had the privilege of, of matriculating forward and working on. I'm saying, and, and I'm, I'm showing this because I, I'm living my dream, guys. The boy from the hood in Memphis who saw gangs, who saw crime, who saw violence, who comes from a jacked up family, who, who, has a, who has a therapist on retainer, who has a coach on retainer. LeBron James spent a million and a half dollars last year. He's the number one player in the world. A million and a half dollars on his body last year. Right? There's a reason that the great become great and stay great. Because the great who are, who are aiming to live out their dreams, they have, no, they have no shame. They're unabashed about saying, hey, you know what? These are some things that are barriers in my life. And instead of me making excuses, I'm going to make adjustments. Right? And so what do you need this morning, gentlemen, in order to go to the next level? What are the gaps in your life? What are the spaces that are broken? And what do you need to do differently in order to actually go to the next level and live out those dreams that you say you have for your life? Guys, my marriage was on rocks for years. I, I, I'm, again, I'm just very transparent. Mark and I had some very honest conversation. Anthony Flynn had to go get help. There was nobody in my life to train me, to teach me how to be a great husband, how to be a great father. My model was broken. And so I had to go in and do some hard work, guys, internally first, right? And obviously that led to external in order to actually move forward and, and, and heal, help to heal, to begin the process of healing my marriage. 
it was the same in business, right? Like, I, I spent many years not really living up to my full potential, and I was tired of losing. About three years ago, three years ago, I'm just, again, very transparent. Three years ago, I hit a financial wall that I'd never hit before. I had, a, I had two major, large grants that were going to be coming in for this foundation that I started, and I was living strictly 100% off of my nonprofit work, and these two major six-figure grants were supposed to come in. They came in six months later. I hit a wall. I thought I was going to have to pull my son out of his school. And I said to my wife, man, this is crazy. God has blessed me to get to this point in my life. I know I have skills. I know I have talent. I know I have abilities. And, and yet I find myself in this situation where I'm, I'm, I'm concerned about having to possibly pull my son out of the school that we know that's best for him. I should not be in this situation. What do I need to do differently in order to actually make the adjustments to go to the next level. And, and with 100% humility, my household income has gone up 500% in the last three years. And I'm only sharing that. I'm not sharing that for the sake of stuff, material stuff. What I'm saying is I started getting up at 3 o'clock in the morning and doing the work. Anthony, there are some gaps in your life. What are the, what are the gaps that you're making? What are you doing wrong? That, that has impact on your marriage, that has impact on your family, that has impact on your day-to-day -day business structure, that has impact on your finances. What's happening that you're missing? So I had to go get help. And I, I want to say it over and over. I hope you hear. If you don't hear anything else, I'm, I'm saying get help. Get community. Wherever the gaps are, I need you to go hard at bringing people in your life who are skilled and developed in those areas and I need you to begin the process of putting things in place in order to work on closing those gaps. Right? And so that, that's some of the work that I had to do. Now, this is important. Uh, just yesterday, just again, diversity, living my dream. Japanese CEO of a company called Toto uh, just went in yesterday. I was telling these guys last night how, how amazing. You know, this kid from the hood, I'm sitting in the room with a translator about to sign a consulting agreement with a, with a major Japanese company. And, I, and here I am communicating with a Japanese translator. Like, how does the boy from the hood, who again, just told you, three years ago was struggling financially because I hit a wall and didn't know how I was going to come out, how does this happen in a matter of three years? God's grace, and I'm willing to get my butt up at 3 o'clock in the morning and go to work. Right now, there's a whole lot more, right, that goes with that, clearly. But I'm saying I'm willing to do the work, and I want to challenge you on accountability, surrounding yourself with people who can help stretch you and take you to the next level, but also transparency. The willingness to be open and honest and admit that I've got a whole lot of flaws. Guys, I'm a sick man. I come from a father who's a, who's a, who's a, who's a, a janitor and a mom, you know, who, I mean, who's pregnant at 16. Right? So I got a lot of sicknesses. And for so long, I tried to deny those sicknesses in my life. And by becoming honest and transparent and being willing to admit my flaws, I was able to start making the necessary adjustments. And God blesses me to be surrounded by guys like Mark Wesson because, we, because the spirit tests the spirit. The authenticity tests the authenticity. You draw who you are, right? And so as you're willing to work, as you get better, it gets better, right? Whatever it is in your life, as you get better, it gets better. As I got better, my marriage got better. As I got better, growth in my business got better. As I got better, my relationship with my children got better. Right? So I had to do some work. And you're going to hear me. I know you're probably tired of hearing me say that. But I'm going to keep saying it because I want it to stick. I want you to get sick of me saying it. Right? So it just sticks in your mind. Right? Um, that's, that's us at more. Now, some of you may recognize this guy. This is Eric Thomas. He's the number one motivational speaker in the world. He just became a client. If you follow me online, you'll see we're dropping a video together. We're going to be doing some major stuff. Get this. I just put E and Ray Lewis together on Wednesday. We're going to be doing an event in October. So we were together at the Super Bowl. We're going to be doing some work with Morgan Stanley. Uh, that's us recording. That's me coaching him. Uh, obviously, that's Ray and Jim Brown. These are guys that I'm actually working with on a daily basis, right? That's me coaching Andre Fluella. And Dre uh, was a Florida State grad. Played in the league for seven years. Played alongside Indama Kingsu at the Detroit Lions. Uh, and um, that's Lamar Jackson. We had an event last week. By the way, he's an incredible kid. Incredible. I mean, incredibly humble. I met a whole lot of guys, Patrick Mahomes and a whole bunch of guys last week at the event, uh, NFL VIP event. Incredible young man. 
regardless of the criticisms you may have of him as a quarterback, the most humble young man I met all evening, right? And, and all of that to say, I'm living my dream, right? I get to get up every single morning and write, and write the story that I decided I wanted to live, obviously in conjunction with God's grace. I don't want to leave that out. I don't want, you to, I don't want this to come across as self-proclamation because clearly if it weren't for God's grace, I never would have made it out of the hood. Fourth grade closest friend is uh, Life Plus 47. Deontay McBee, he kicked the door in, gangster disciple, tried to rob a man, ended up having to take his life. He's doing life plus 47. My fifth grade closest friend, Kendrick Marr, was murdered three years ago in the same hood we walked the streets in as kids. He was in the backseat of a car, drug deal gone bad, boom, he got shot and murdered. My middle and high school closest friend is currently a struggling cocaine addict, living in the hood in Memphis in a trap house. Right, my first college roommate, I was a full scholarship football player, my first college roommate was literally selling cocaine out of, our, out of our room, got locked up, did 16 years of federal time, nine different federal pens. So I want to keep balancing, right, I don't because I don't want this to come across as self-proclamation. What I'm trying to say to you is, think about the adversities that I've had to experience in my life, and yet think about the fact that I've decided to get my butt up every single morning and not let the adversities and the circumstances around me control the outcome of my life. Regardless of what's happening around me, I'm going to get my butt up tomorrow morning and go back at it exactly again the same. Right? And you have the opportunity to do that. So again, whatever adjustments you need to make, you cannot say any longer nobody told you to make them because I did. Right? Make the adjustments, gentlemen. Make the adjustments because there are people who are counting on you. All right, so here we go quickly as I wrap up. My time is coming short. Matthew 25, the parable of the talents, one of my favorite parables. For it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted to them this property. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one. Watch this, to each according to his own ability. Now, I can't compete. One of my very best friends, I mean, literally, we're, we're tight. I mean, super tight. His grandfather founded Holiday Inn. He's a third generation heir uh, to, to the throne of a, of a multi, multi million dollar family business. I don't try to compete with my boy. Like, like he has abilities and he has access to resources, third generation, right? I don't have those same resources and access, but I don't get up every morning and make an excuse about it. I get up and grind. Like, I get up and put in work, right? And, and my goal is, hey, I appreciate and admire what my homeboy has, and now how do I begin to build that for my family? So what his grandfather did for he and his generations, I want to do the same for my son and my daughter and their, gener and their children to my grandchildren. Right? And that's a shift of mentality. Instead of me getting up focused on what's happening in your yard, I, I want to admire what's happening in your yard. I want to learn and benchmark from what's happening in your backyard, but I need to cut my own grass, guys. I need, to be, I need to be working my fields. You know, I appreciate because you give me something to dream for. Like, I'm so grateful God brought my boy in my life because I'm like, wow, I didn't know that that existed. I didn't know about family trusts and wills and, and family businesses. And, and my, my man graduated and his job was to manage the portfolio of 49 family members. I didn't know anything like that existed. Thank you for giving me a shot at a dream that I never had as a kid who grew up in poverty. Thank you. Right, so wow, I get to get up today and work on that dream. Somebody was able to, another human being was able to build that. I had the opportunity to do the same thing. Are you kidding me? Whoa, let's go. I'm excited. Let's get up. Let's go, guys. And I want you to think about that. Your abilities. Don't focus on mine. Don't focus on his. Don't focus on hers. You have abilities that God gave you to deliver on, and I need you to get up and spend the rest of your natural life every single day trying to deliver on those responsibilities. That's what it's about. Each according to his ability. Then watch this. Then he went away. Sometimes you may feel like God just ducked out on you, right? After he, after he gave them the talents, he went away. Sometimes God just kind of takes a sit, seat back on us and says, what is he going to do with what I gave him? I wonder what Anthony is going to do with what I gave him. And it says, uh, he who had received the five talents, he traded them, he made five more. Watch this. Da, 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 da. But he who received the one talent went and dug in the ground and hid his master's money. Now, this is key, too. After a long time. After a long time. At five years old, I told you all what happened when my dad put us on that Greyhound bus. I'm 41 years old today. It's been a long time. 
but a whole lot of hard work that has gone into helping me get to where I am today. It may take you years to build what it is that God has called you to build. Your marriage, your children, your business. Don't expect the, the magic wand to, to wave and everything be voila tomorrow. It may take you a long time. The master may allow you to have to go through some things to experience some adversity in order for you to actually come out on top. You cannot be afraid of the process. So many people, I spend a lot of time with some really high level people. And I'm amazed at the number of people who want to try to skirt the process. We, we focus so much on the end result. So many of us get an epiphany, and, and, and what happens is we get, we get drunk off the dream. Like we see the end goal, and we get drunk off the dream itself. We have a euphoria off the end goal, and we forget about the process. Bro, you got to go through the process in order to get to that end result. And don't be afraid to embrace the process, gentlemen. And yes, it's going to have some ups and some downs. And it might even have more downs than ups. But yet, the process is designed to define you, to shape you, to give you strength. That adversity gives you the fortitude, the, 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 the infrastructure to be able to excel according to God's plan and purpose for your life. Right? And so it may take some time. The master, uh, the, now after a long time, he came back and settled accounts with them. And so the question will be, and I'm going to fast forward for the sake of time, but what is it at the end of it all, will, will God be pleased with the outcome of your life? Is God pleased with your marriage? Is God pleased with your marriage? Is God pleased with how you parent your children? Is God pleased with your character right now? And we all have flaws. We all have some gaps. We all have gaps, right? I'm admitting that I have plenty of them. And so I'm not, I'm not speaking from the position of works righteousness, like you have to get up and perform to try to please God. He doesn't need you to please him, if you will. He just desires for you to please him. And that's a difference. That's a difference. Right? And so think about that. All right? So, and he who had five received, uh, he, he who had the five talents came forward, bringing the five talents more, saying, Master, you delivered to me five talents. Here I have made five talents more. And his master said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. Now pay attention to this, right? Because notice that the, he says, enter into the joy of your master. Notice that to me, I interpret this as joy being associated with fidelity. Not with the actual outcome. Because you've been faithful to the process, you have joy. And again, many of us, our joy is contingent upon the outcome. If I don't see, if the market is down today, I'm a pitiful mess. <laughs> if the market is up, I got smiles on my face. Bro, if you spend your life allowing the circumstance, whether it's raining or sun, sunshine, to dictate how you feel every day, you're going to live a miserable life. But if you can stay faithful to the process, and no matter what life tosses at me today, I'm still going to get up at 3 o'clock in the morning and still give life everything I have to give. Some days are going to be great. Some days are going to not be so great. But I'm still going to give life everything I give. And in the end, what I've discovered personally is that it seems like over time, just like those high-growth companies, even though they have some ups and downs, over time they keep rising. Life keeps rising. Be faithful to the process. Don't focus so much on the end result, guys, that you miss the appreciation of the ups and downs in your personal life market, in the market of your life metaphor. Right? So joy comes from the fidelity to the process, not the end result. And, and you could be twisted if you only associate your joy with the outcome, with your performance. Because it's up and down. I need you to be consistent. If you're going to fix your marriage, do it consistently. If you're going to be a better husband and father, and, be, and, 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 and if you want your kids to smile when you walk through the door and not be miserable, be consistent. If you want your business, if your business can, to continue to grow, be consistent. I've seen more failures out of the inconsistency of leadership. This company I was dealing with yesterday, we, we were talking about leadership. If you've ever gone to the men's room, you've seen probably a total toilet or a total urinal. All right? They have a leadership challenge. The business model is a great business model. I mean, they're thriving overseas, but North, the North American model is hurting. 
in some areas, and they need to fix it. They need to repair it, and I'm going to come in and help them do it. But we're starting with leadership. You actually have more authority than you realize to make some adjustments. I'm, again, I'm not saying you're God. I'm not trying to tell you to play Messiah. All I'm simply saying is you have more control than you think you do. All right? All right, so let me fast forward uh, because I'm, I'm pressed on time. He also had received the one talent, came forward saying, Master, I knew you to be a hard man. Uh, fast forward to 25, so I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master answered him, you wicked and slothful servant, you knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I sc scatter no seed. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and at my coming again, I should have received interest. I should have received what was my own with interest. So, so I think, simply put, the challenge here in this scripture, right, is that whatever the talent you have, right, I need you to invest it. For many of us, the circumstances of life have more weight than the, the fortitude to get up every single day and keep pressing toward leveraging the talents that God gave us. And so we bury it. I know so many depressed people who aren't living their dreams, who aren't fulfilling life on a daily basis. Because life hit them with a curveball, and instead of them stepping over the curveball and continuing to thrive in life, they've allowed the circumstances to mire them. And so they're essentially and metaphorically burying their talent. Right? And so are you burying your talent? When you leave out of here this morning, I know you got a day ahead of you, will you give everything you have to give? Will you multiply or will you bury? Will you multiply or will you bury? Um, my time is basically up. I have some more slides, but I don't have time to go through them. So here's what I'll close with, this last slide right here. Um, success is not natural. All right? Success is not natural. So you are, not, you, are, you are hardwired for survival and not for success. So in this image, this is the run with the bulls in Paplano, Spain. And you see this gentleman, he's running away from the bulls, right? Because it's not natural to turn around and run at a bull. I mean, it's just not natural. And yet for many of us, this is what life looks like for us. The bulls, the bullies in our lives, the, the, the things that create psychological, emotional, spiritual, relational barriers. There are bullies in our lives that are driving us away instead of us turning around and facing the bulls, the bullies in our lives. And so I want you to think, as I close, I want you to think about what are the bullies in your life today? What are those things that you know you need to turn around and face and fix and put in the work, the emotional work, the spiritual work, the psychological work, what do you need to turn around and face? It's not natural to run toward a bull. And our human makeup is we're just not designed to rush toward adversity. Like, we're, we're not designed that way. Who wants to run at adversity, like intentionally? But if you want to overcome and see, some, and see different outcomes in your life, you have to do what's counterintuitive and essentially what feels counterintuitive in your spirit and in your psyche. And you have to turn around and face that adversity. I didn't want to hear my wife tell me over and over and over how miserable she was in my marriage. Who wants to hear that? So, Anthony, you got to turn around and do the work yourself. And as you get better, it gets better. And, guys, I've seen it. I wish my wife were here to be here to tell you how great our marriage has gotten because Anthony Flynn started with me. I was willing to go see the therapist first. I booked the marriage counseling. She didn't have to do it. Life is too short. I don't have time to keep hearing my wife say, Anthony, you're giving all you have to the church and all you have to the ministry world, and, and I'm not getting it at home. And the kids, they're having trouble even being around you because the anger I grew up with because of the abuse and everything around me, I was carrying that into my household. And so Anthony had to make some adjustments in order for my wife and kids just to like me. I'm just being honest. I had to make some adjustments. It wasn't natural. It felt, like the bull, it felt like the bull coming at me. Like, whoa, what is this? All this work, all this energy I'm having to exhibit in order to turn things around is crazy. And yet, wow, I'm so glad I made the investment. And I'm so glad I'm not afraid to stand up here on stage and just be brutally honest with you about the fact that I have some sicknesses, that I have a therapist on retainer, that I have a coach on retainer, and that I got to keep doing the work every single day like clockwork. Because my natural instinct is to run from my childhood. My natural, I was born into a certain DNA, a certain genetic tendency. There's proclivities that I have that are just natural. 
And I have to get up at 3 o'clock in the morning and retrain my mind every single day because there are some natural instincts, and I have to undo those natural instincts and let, the, let God's grace live first in me and continue to do the work on a daily basis to work through what's natural, those proclivities. All right, so I close with this. Find men in your life who you can walk with on a daily basis, who can help hold you accountable, and who can help, who you can be transparent with, and who can help you walk through the pain points of your life. You won't do it alone, mo most of us. So I need you to make the adjustments, right? And YBL being an example is a great opportunity, a great environment for you to find like-minded men and maybe men who aren't like-minded. You might also need to, I, needed, I didn't need to find all like-minded people. I needed to find some people who were also different-minded who could challenge me and say, bro, you need to get your stuff together, right? I gave, I gave phone numbers to my wife. Here are three men you can call when I'm screwed up. And boy, I've gotten some calls. Real talk, I'm, <laughs> real talk, I've gotten some calls. She's not afraid to call them, and I'm not afraid to make the adjustment because I want my marriage to be successful. I want to finish well with my children. That's my dream. It's not to be a successful businessman. I mean, I want my family to eat, but my dream is to finish well with my wife and my kids. I'm 22 years in. I made a commitment of a minimum of 60 years. That'll put me at 86 years old. And so I'm going to continue to fight for that 60 years of my marriage. And I'm willing to get up at 3 o'clock every single morning to make that dream a reality. I love you guys. Thank you for your time. If you need to, if you need to uh, follow up with me, my phone number's there. My email is there. Uh, follow me on Instagram. I drop motivational messages every day on Instagram, uh, so please do follow me on LinkedIn, mo uh, Instagram. I'd love to stay in touch with you. Thank you. Hey, let's, let's take just a few minutes oh. of questions. Anthony was going to answer just a few questions if anybody had a particular question. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, I want to hear the difference between doing the work apart from Christ, because you told us last night about how you came to Christ when you were 24 years old. Yep. Mm. Yeah, so the question was, what's the difference between doing the work apart from Christ versus doing the work with Christ involved in the process? Um, when I was doing the work without Christ, I was doing it, again, through my own natural proclivities, right, which were leading me to a dead end. My grandfather, uh, I'm just going to speak very candidly, my grandfather was a whoremonger. My dad has three, three children by three different women and, and, was, and is proud. Uh, that, that he's sleeping around and, 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 and planting his seeds all over the place, right? And so those, those tendencies in my grandfather and my dad, and I'm sure, and even in my great, I'm, those tendencies are in me, right? And so when I was trying to do the work on my own, Rob, I was doing it through a tainted perspective. So, so I'm that dude who, you know, I'm that dude who is like, I, I can go hard, but be going hard in the wrong direction. And, right, and so the grace of Christ helped me to remove some of the, the tainted lenses and allowed me to see life from a totally different perspective. And so now I'm going hard in the right directions. And so uh, before, for example, before Christ, I was going hard at pleasing the world around me, and success was my God. I was going to make the money. And look, I worked at two Fortune 100 companies early in my age, had the number one territory in the country uh, for a Fortune 50 company. Got recruited away from that company. Youngest person in the United States with a four-state region at 3M, you know, at the time of Fortune 100 company. But I was miserable every single day because there was a gaping hole on the inside of me. Money was not doing it for me. Putting on my suit and the company car and all of that, I'm 24, I'm balling. It wasn't doing it for me. And there was something missing on the inside. And so, Rob, I had to do some healing. And Christ, the relationship with Christ allowed me to do some healing and put life in the right perspective. And so now when I work hard, I'm working hard, I feel like in the right direction. So I hope that answers your question. Does it? Okay, beautiful. Maybe one or two more? Not so fast. I can't take it. Yes, sir.
how do you, so um, sometimes you grow up, let me make sure I'm getting this question right, sometimes you grow up and there are basically blind spots because of how you grew up. And so the question essentially is, how do you basically begin to recognize those blind spots and begin to do the process or do the work to start addressing those blind spots? Surround yourself with truth tellers. So I tell all my homeboys, if you want to do life with me, be ready for brutal honesty. That's just the way. Mark and I, how we hit it off. We had a 30-minute ride uh, to, to the airport, and the next thing you know, I'm, I'm staying overnight at his home because we had a very brutally honest conversation immediately. And, 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 I, and I think look for people in your life who are authentic because, again, back to that illustration I showed, the natural tendency is to find people in our lives who hype us up, right? Like, yeah, tell me how great I am. Tell me how, tell me how good I feel. And yet, on the back side of that, there's misery, right? Because you look great on stage, but you're miserable behind the scenes. And so, I, again, it's counterintuitive because natural instinct, right? I didn't grow up with affirmation. So I spent a lot of my life trying to get that affirmation. So I was doing stuff for people approval instead of doing stuff for actually uh, for, for health and wholeness. So a lot of us spend our time, watch this, trying to look good instead of just being good. Right, or trying to look like we're successful instead of doing the work to actually be successful. And so, that, and so what you need to do is surround yourself with people in your life who are actually living authentically and who aren't afraid to actually say, okay, bro, you got some issues, and I'm going to call you out on those issues. And I literally have my pastor, I have an accountability partner, we meet twice a month, and we keep it real and raw, bro. Real and raw. And it's necessary for me. And I've had them, guys, I've had them, think about it. A boy from the hood in Memphis who's here. You know how many adjustments I've had to make to be able to stand up here? I've had to make tons of adjustments because the model doesn't add up. My dad's a janitor, right? It, it, it doesn't add up. So, so nobody in my family ever went to college, launched a business, was an entrepreneur, wrote a book. Like everything was pioneering in the first time for me. So I've had to do a whole lot of listening and learning. And, 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 and being willing to take feedback and make the adjustments. And so I hope that helps. So again, a community like this one, you need to be involved in a community like this. These roundtables signify how you should be spending a substantial portion of your life. Oh, I got to say this. So I was with somebody, I was speaking to a group yesterday, and they're like, man, how do I find the time? To, and I said, you don't have a time management issue, you have an energy management issue. Because every one of us has 168 hours in the week. And so there are billionaires who have the same 168 as the person who's making 10 bucks an hour. So what's different? It's literally how they're spending their energy. Right? It's not time. I don't, it's not that you don't have enough time. It's that you don't put your energy where you need to be putting your energy. And so watch this. I'm going to free you up today with this. If you give me 5% of an adjustment in your life relative to time, there are 168 hours in a week. According to my math, and it's not always right, that's 8.4 hours in a week, 5%, right? But okay, you don't have 5%. Give me 2.5% of an adjustment. All right, that's 4.2 hours. If you give me four hours a week of an adjustment, here's an example. What if you listen to four podcasts in a week? That's, four, that's 16 podcasts in a month. Do the math, 16 times 12. Do you, know you know how much change would happen in your life? If you listen to 16 podcasts a month that were directed in the space that you wanted to grow in, if you listen to six, if you, li if you made a two and a half percent adjustment and listened to four sermons a month for the, for, excuse me, four sermons a week for the next year, can you imagine how much growth you will see in your life in just a matter of a year? You can't get that in college. They can't teach you that at Harvard or Kellogg or at Stanford. You can't get that at Wharton. Do you feel me? You got to make the adjustments. Two and a half percent. I don't need you to get up at three o'clock in the morning. If you just got up 30 minutes earlier and did that five days a week, that's two and a half hours extra that you could do some miraculous things in your life. Imagine that. Make the adjustment, guys. Make the adjustment. Stop talking about it. this last slide right here. Uh-oh, yep, act, right? Draw a line through the word talk. I, I was tired of telling my wife that I was going to change. 
Sorry, I, yeah, I was tired of telling her. So I decided, okay, I'm going to tell her one last time, and then I'm going to draw a line through telling her, and I'm going to start acting. I, I started therapy. I, I, stop talking about therapy. Go do it. Stop, stop talking about accountability. Get up at whatever time you need to and have breakfast with your guys and do it twice a month like you, like you said you were going to do. So we do a whole lot of talking about our dreams, a whole lot of talking about execution. And we get euphoria because it sounds good when we're telling all of our friends what we're planning to do or what we're intending to do. I need you to stop talking about it and I need you to execute. Let's act, guys. Let's act. Because, again, you don't get out of the hood from talking. Right? We talked about being rappers and, 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 and NBA players and NFL players, kids in the hood. We talk a lot. I can say that because I'm from it. But we're not on the middle school team. We're not on the high school team. So there's a metaphor for your life. If you can talk all you want to, but if your wife doesn't see you go to therapy, she's not believing you. Talk, talk, talk. Talk does not pay bills. You can't go to your utility company and talk them through paying your utility bill or your mortgage. No, they want to see action. Is anybody with me? <laughs> yeah, so your actions prove why your words mean nothing, gentlemen. Last question, and I got to sit down. Yes, sir. Oh, we got a few. Let me know when you cut me off, Mark. Yes, sir. So the first thing I did this morning, you know, is I do my Bible study consistently every single morning without fail. So before I messaged him, which is at 359, I had already been up doing my Bible study. Right. So literally, I cannot thrive without Jesus in my life. It doesn't work for me. Maybe some of you can, but I personally, I literally can't do it. I saw what my life was like without Jesus. And, and I see the difference with Jesus. So literally, and I don't want to be sanctimonious on you, but starting with my spiritual fabric, I keep that solid and tight. Uh, so that's one thing, my spiritual development. I, I was talking about podcasts. I listen to podcasts like, a, like an animal. Um, 2011, I read 48 books. 2012, I read 36 books. 2013, I wrote my first book. And, and the reason I'm saying that is how, how to recharge. So I pour into myself is what I'm trying to say. I'm not saying how many books I read for bragging. I'm saying I had gaps. So if I have some challenges, I feed myself according to those areas of challenge, if that makes sense. And so by feeding myself, I, and we, I said this last night, I allow other people to drink from the saucer and not the actual cup itself. Right. So when I do life, I'm trying to do life from a cup that's overflowing and allow what's on the sauce plate to actually be how I do life and what I give. So it keeps me recharged. I work out consistently. I work out at least three days a week. Uh, so I'll run a few miles. I do some lifting. Uh, and then, man, I'm pretty simple because of I think uh, which is also a gift. I didn't experience a whole lot as a kid growing up. Growing up, I never went on a vacation. I didn't get on a plane until I was 20 years old. I didn't open up my first bank account until I was 21. So the, the luxuries that my kids have that they appreciate later, that they'll appreciate later in life, I didn't have those. All that to say, I'm pretty simple to please. Give me a workout and a book to read and let me hang with my family. I'm energized, personally. But that may not be the case for everyone. So you kind of have to find, out that, find that balance for yourself. Yep, yep. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Well, good morning. All right, good, we're on. Um, I'm Rob Jennon. I am the city director for Young Business Leaders of Birmingham. It is a great privilege to have you all here this morning. And Anthony, thank you for coming. And, and thank you for sharing your enthusiasm and your heart and, and your story with us. We're grateful for you. I heard a few things here. Um, I just want to tell you a little bit about YBL. And he talked a lot about action steps. I'm going to give you a few in just a moment. Uh, while I'm talking, uh, you can look at these cards, these comment cards you've got on your table. Go ahead and take those out, and please start filling these out. We're going to have a drawing in just a minute for a couple of uh, items. We've got uh, a couple of lunch for two gift cards. We've got a, uh, a chair from OFC Workscapes, and I think Anthony might even be 
uh, throwing in one of his books. So um, please fill these out. And I'm going to talk you through the response options on the bottom. But before that, I just want to kind of call attention to a couple of things. Young business leaders, we are a community of men committed to friendship, accountability, and worship of Jesus Christ and promoting and making his name known in the marketplace. That's our commitment at YBL. And just a few things Anthony talked about. First of all, he talked about gaps. He talked about gaps. And our conviction at YBL, the biggest gap in your life is the gap between you and God. And that is a gap that God has crossed on your behalf. That is a gap he has crossed on your behalf. While we were yet enemies, Christ died for us. Romans 5.8. And so we want you to be encouraged to realize that all this work that Anthony talked about, and he shared about coming to Christ at 24 years old, God has already moved towards you in grace by sending his son and giving his son as a gift to you. And so now, the second thing Anthony talked about a lot about being accountable. How are you going to respond? The biggest question, we all have gifts, we all have talents, but the biggest gift that every single person in this room has received is the gift of Jesus Christ as an offering and sacrifice for our sins. You can have a personal relationship with God through His Son, Jesus Christ. And I encourage you, I encourage you to think about How can you respond to that? What are you going to do with this incredible gift which he's given you? Are you going to embrace it, or are you going to bury it in the ground like Anthony talked about? And then the third thing he talked about was making adjustments. Making adjustments. And these responses in the card, these are some practical ways you can adjust. But the first question you've got to ask is this. Who is in charge of your life? Are you in charge of your life, or have you given control to God to let Him be the Lord of your life, the King over the decisions you make? Who is determining what success means in your life, what thriving means in your life? How do you define those words? What's the content in them? And so I encourage you, wrestle with those things. And here's four ways you can consider that. First of all, you see on this card... First box, I would like more information about a relationship with Jesus Christ. There is nothing more important this morning. If you do not have a relationship with Jesus Christ and you want to know what that means, we want to talk with you before you leave. You check the box, but come on down here to the front. I will be down here in the front. Anthony will be here. We've got table leaders who would love to talk to you about that. So take that seriously and don't leave today. This is is about everything in your life. Because everything has to do with God. Number two, I'd like a one-on-one meeting to invest the claims of Jesus Christ. I know not everyone in this room is a Christian. We're glad. We're glad. We're glad that you're here. If you're questioning and you wonder, what does this mean that people are saying um, that that Jesus Christ is, is the reason for my life and that he is the way to God? If you have questions about that and whether that's really true... I'd love to take you to lunch, get coffee with you, meet with you at your office or wherever's convenient for you. Our staff and our lay leaders would love to connect with you. So fill that out and we'll connect with you. Number three, I'm interested in a small group Bible study. Just like Anthony said, maybe a lot of you say, you know, I'm a Christian, but you're not accountable to another group of men. You're not connected in any meaningful way to a body of guys that's helping you go deeper with God and to grow deeper. We want to help connect you. We're going to start several new groups as a result of this this meeting this morning. And so if you would like to get involved in a study, please check that box. And one thing, too, if you could write in the notes, just let me know if, if mornings or lunchtime is better for you. And if there's a specific part of town, downtown or the summit or Hoover or Trustville, could you just go ahead and write that in the comments? That'll make it easier for us to kind of match you up. And then um, it says, I'm interested in finding a mentor or being a mentor. Just like Anthony is the head of 100 black men of Atlanta, that's a commitment because there's so many men growing up without men pouring truth into their life. And they don't have fathers to teach them basic principles for how to live. And so these are men who are becoming fathers to men in junior high and high school and helping them find the right path. Well, 
We want to encourage you to do that. We have over 100 men who've signed up to be mentors here, and they can help you professionally. They can help you personally. We would love to connect with you. And if you want to consider being a mentor, we'd love our committee to connect with you and see if it would be a right fit for you to be a YBL mentor.